Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jurex and this is how Ukraine's paper planes what the f- are destroying Russia's military. This will change the military show obviously. Cardboard drones may sound like a joke. I still don't believe it. I feel like there's like something there. So all it takes is a rain to screw them up. How does it even work, man? Okay, how high do they fly? I mean, moisture would be an issue, wouldn't it? I don't know, man. They become a nightmare for Russian forces in Ukraine. <laughs> I just, ah, oh God, this is. I don't know what to say about this, right? You know how fucked up that is to hear a news, like a cardboard cardboard drone has destroyed your like very expensive tank, like. this like insult to injury right there like already things are going really badly already like even the those amazon drones are a problem now there are cardboard planes that are causing issues and who th- who would have thought of this imagine just for let's forget past few years before ukraine invasion happened who in the right mind in any country would think like oh by the way we're going to use cardboard planes and dr- amazon drones as like a proper effective tool Ukraine is doing all these things like you know really thinking outside of the box and implementing anything that would work. This is just insane. This Ukraine Russia conflict is going to like change warfare for the future. Whatever is going to happen there, people are going to take notes and mold their thing around that. This is just insane. So let's watch one. Cardboard drones. Sounds like a joke, right? Yet these unassuming creations have become a nightmare for Russian forces, capable of obliterating jets and turning the tide in modern warfare. How did something so simple become so deadly? Putin's plans for an easy victory in Ukraine were shattered by a new era of warfare. His pride in a supposedly modernized military and an impressive tank fleet couldn't withstand the relentless onslaught of large and small drones, transforming many of those tanks into smoldering ruins. Despite their experience from the Armenia-Azerbaijani conflict, the Russian invaders were woefully unprepared for the drone warfare they faced. By the second half of 2023, that is such a good point, man. Georgia, Azerbaijan, like Russia has been in conflict here and there all the time. There have been wars like that, small wars. It's just like Russia has been. Russia hasn't been just like sitting there. In recent time, Russia has been in a lot of wars. So for Russia, who supposedly should be better because they have more experience in current times, is like facing all these issues with card. How do you even prepare for a cardboard drone anyway? Like they're they're getting surprised left and right. Russia sought to dominate the drone warfare arena, making significant strides. But in early 2024, Ukraine reclaimed its lead, refusing to rest on its laurels. With their nation's survival at stake, Ukrainians pushed innovation to its limits in the drone race. One of their groundbreaking innovations: the easily concealable cardboard drone. Dismissed by some as a mere gimmick, this drone has proven lethal, downing Russian jets and redefining combat strategies. Curious about how a cardboard drone, nicknamed the Origami of Death, could wield such power? Let's explore its design, operational use, and its profound implications for the future of drone warfare. As a preview for what this origami of death can do, it might be best to look at the words of one of Russia's military bloggers, who was writing in August 2023, shortly after 100 million dollars worth of aircraft went up in smoke to a Ukrainian drone attack. Tonight, Ukrainians use them in a swarm, mixing drones with warheads with empty drones. I don't know exactly what engines were on the drones, but if they were electric powered, then they were not launched from Ukraine. But these drones were indeed launched from Ukraine. What model actually caused such damage? The drone in question is called the Corvo Precision Payload Delivery System (PPDS), manufactured by. There's the thing, right? Many countries, like I think Japan and others, basically giving aid to Ukraine in money, currency. But they're not putting any restrictions on like what you can do with the money. Obviously, there's a reason behind it, like indirectly supplying them with the arms, so they can literally buy anything with that money. Which, in a way, if you really think about it. It's kind of better than giving them equipments because equipment is like whatever you're lying around. Like, okay, I can give you this, but if you give them currency, they can literally go to any market on the planet or just buy raw materials for you to make something that could be really useful, right? So basically, buying electric engines and shit for your cardboard plane, right, on the down low without anybody else noticing, which is like insane. By an Australian company called Spypack Systems in cooperation with the Australian Army. 
Australia has been a steady supporter of Ukraine in its resistance against Russian aggression, delivering a total of $960 million worth of aid in the first two years of the war. This aid has involved counter-drone systems, like the Slinger Kinetic Defense System, which is designed to detect and shoot down fast-moving small drones. But the Australians are helping Ukraine in offensive aspects of drone warfare as well. In July 2022, the Australian government launched an initiative to supply Ukraine with a PPDS drone. The initiative was part of a $1.1 million contract, and SpyPack has been exporting the PPDS to Ukraine since March 2023, when the drone was revealed at the Avalon Air Show. SpyPack is shipping the units to Ukraine at a rate of at least 100 per month. Supplying Ukraine with the PPDS is SpyPack's only focus for that market, which is an indication of its success there. The company sells these drones in pizza box-sized containers that can carry 24 at a time. When they arrive in Ukraine, PPDS drones are stacked and flat-packed, an arrangement which makes them easy and efficient to deliver. 24 of the drones can come in one package. They are then assembled using rubber bands. The drones come with personalized launchers. These are small catapults that propel the PPDS into the sky. If no launcher is available... Yeah, I'm sorry, this is just... The, I don't know how to explain this. To me, this is one of the most insane shit ever. We are talking about global scale military warfare. Rubber bands, cardboard, what is happening? Standing from Australia in a pizza box size. I, I, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm not gonna lie, this is like one of those things, like my mind is like... Future will look very different after this war, right? Or maybe future will be so fucked up. They won't use all these tactics. They will just use like main military warfare with like heavy metal equipments. And will the ukraine russia war will just be seen as like a unique battle. But I don't know. I highly doubt that. Because one thing I've noticed is the ease of access, uh, availability, right? And just like, uh, you know, like cheap, cheap, cheap things is like a real focus for the future. Because power in number is like uh, more thing of the future, right? If you have ammunition which is like 90% good but cost half, people will basically go for that. Because now you can shoot two of them. Cardboard planes, all that, like you can make tons of them. I'm sure people are going to utilize this in the future. So this is just insane, man. Someone can throw it into the air. The company is understandably secretive about the material the PPDS is made from, but it seems that the drone isn't actually made of common cardboard, but rather a wax-coated foam board. It's also easily repairable, because damaged parts can be replaced. For example, if the drone's nose cone gets hit, the operators can replace it with a spare. The drone can also be repaired with common tools like hot glue gun and tape, making them durable and easy to call upon in lean times. SpyPack says that the PPDS is designed for covert delivery, and perhaps more than any other drone... This is, this is, this is, oh my god. Oh, if the drone gets damaged, you need like high military equipment, like electronics and like engineers of like, uh, you know, I don't know, like some heavy military defense company. No, no, no. Glue gun, <laughs> foam cardboard. Why the fuck not? This is the most insane story I've ever heard, right? Like even the expertise is not that much. You need like your glue gun and all that shit. Even your kid can make that in like a school project. This is insane drone on the market, the Origami of Death is well suited for such operations. It's designed to be stealthier than a normal drone. First, the PPDS has a size which helps to enhance its stealth profile. The central portion is about as big as a shoebox, while the wingspan is about six and a half feet. More importantly, since the drone is made of a waxy cardboard-like substance, it's transparent to radar. The rise of stealth drones has been another innovation in UAV warfare since the conflict started. Toward the end of 2023, Russia began coloring some of its Shahid drones black to make them less visible to the eye. This coating was not just paint, but rather a specialized material to reduce visibility to radar. The Ukrainians and their Australian- Wouldn't be like navy dark blue would be more invisible because point blank pointing them black might be not that great. I don't know if people know this, but if you want to like hide in darkness, black color is not good because nothing is truly black in that way. Even in pitch darkness, like black would like stand out like very close to black, but more like dark blue and navy, blue, navy blue, dark blue type of thing. So that coating would be better, right? I'm pretty sure that's the case. The partners have taken this to another level with the PPDS. The drone is not completely stealthy because its electronic components, like the battery, can be detected. Nevertheless, it has a lower cross-section to radar thanks to its design and materials. The drone's operator controls the UAV through a specialized Android tablet that comes with the packaging. The PPDS can also fly autonomously if need be. It uses GPS guidance but is resistant to jamming because- Specialized Android tablets on Android tablet. 
I like how it makes it sound like some kind of like specialized some you know like equipment was created just for that some like some high tech military equipment this this was made by I don't know like some like heavy defense company whatever right Northrop this was this specific tablet style looking thing was developed by Northrop just to no no it's just like any Android I'm guessing one plus some Chinese and most of the market is dominated by Chinese. Isn't that something, right? They're using Chinese tablet to basically control this to hurt Russians. It must have been Chinese because Korean might be too costly, right? Chinese is cheap in, relatively. So why the fuck not? Some like Vivo or like OnePlus or some shit like that or some like tablet. There you go. Because in the event the GPS goes down, the PPDS has control software that can calculate its location using the information from the drone's speed and trajectory. According to SpyPak's chief engineer, Ross Osborne, the PPDS can also take weather conditions into account when deciding its flight path, landing pattern, and approach. The wax coating ensures that these drones can continue operating in damp conditions, maritime environments, and even rain, assuming it's not raining cats and dogs outside. When not attacking, the drone- What about heat, though? Wax would not be great at heat. What if it catches heat, friction? Uh, obviously, it says electric motor, but what if like motor gets see I'm pretty sure they would have worked that out, I guess. I don't know. Drone is designed to be reused. A single PPDS drone can be reused up to 60 times for reconnaissance and surveillance missions. The material the PPDS is made of also makes it more resistant to jamming than traditional drones. At a time when both sides of the war are recognizing the importance of jamming, the PPDS might prove more important in the next phase of the conflict and for the future of drone warfare as a whole. We'll discuss this more in detail later. For now, you might be wondering, why would someone come up with the idea for a so-called cardboard drone to begin with? Why was the PPDS conceived in the first place? The PPDS was originally Cheap designed material. for reconnaissance and to carry supplies to frontline positions. The drone weighs 5.3 pounds when empty and can carry a payload of 6.6 .6 pounds. The payload bay has a cover that flips up to ensure the ease of retrieval by the receiver. It's propeller-driven and can reach speeds of 37 miles per hour. The PPDS has a reported range of 75 miles. However, as we'll soon see, there is good reason to think these drones can far exceed that distance, and this reveals the first clue about the need for a cardboard drone. The PPDS's design gives it a great advantage in range over the typical rotor-based small drones that Ukraine's pilots have long favored. This is because of its light weight and fixed-wing configuration. There's less drag, greater energy efficiency, and the wings generate the lift. The PPDS can fly at higher altitudes than rotor drones as well, which can add to its... Yeah, the Lotus philosophy, right? Uh, just something, something add lightness, right? That is, that rings so true in any, any equipment, any type of vehicle, whether it's plane, car, or whatever. If you make something light, right? You can find out like how little energy you need, how little uh, wastage there is, how it can perform just as well with insane efficiency. I have like car Suzuki Jimny, which is like four by four, but it's insanely light. It only has 100 horsepower with like 140 newton meters of torque or something, which is like insanely low. I'm like, okay, I got this car, but is it gonna move? It moves really quickly. It's fast accelerating. And I'm like, what the fuck? How is that happening? It's insanely like, you know, like uh, light. Equivalent car would be like 800 kilograms or near a ton heavier than that. It's made with very light material and things. So things like that, it's just like better fuel economy, better like efficiency, not generating much of heat. Lightness is just better. Ability to surprise the enemy. The PPDS can land within two meters of its intended destination. For surveillance, the original PPDS drone came with a camera placed within the top of its nose, just above the propeller. Aside from covert delivery and surveillance, low cost is one of the things SpyPak prioritized with this drone. And the second major reason why it chose such an... It's not even low cost. But let's put money aside. It's about like... Uh, materials, raw materials, right? In any warfare, even if you don't think about money, materials will be an issue. Like, very good, like that's the one thing Nazi Germany faced. Any kind of material, oil and this and that, uh, metal for the tank, for the drones. If you make drones out of metal, you're already short of metals. Like, you already have a problem, right? If you make a ton of, like, drones, now you can make certain type of tanks, some anti-aircraft uh, thing here and there. Cardboard is just cardboard, right? You can find use of cardboard. So it's like tapping into resources that didn't that didn't matter before, right? There was a ton of cardboard. What to do with it? Oh, by the way, let's make drone out of that. You just added things and without using any metal resources. Unusual base material. The unit price is not available on SpyPak's website, but reportedly ranges from between $670 to $3,350. 
Some of Ukraine's FPV drones are cheaper than this, but what makes the PPDS interesting from an economic standpoint is that it's considered a military-grade drone, according to Michael Partridge, a representative from the company. Other higher-end military-grade drones like the Shahid cost in the range of tens of thousands of dollars or more. Other military-grade drones, like the American MQ-9 Reaper, cost 30 million. Thanks to its design and construction, the PPDS drone can yeah, you can't really compare it with this drone, but yeah, still. ...deliver military uses for much cheaper prices. It won't be nearly as powerful as a Shahed or a Reaper, but the low price doesn't mean this drone is ineffective. The Ukrainians have since weaponized it and turned it into an effective kamikaze drone. They began using the PPDS... Hold up, the Shahed and Reaper. I'm pretty sure those are not equivalent drones, are they? Because one costs few th few thousands and one costs 30 million. It better not be similar, because otherwise, like, America just puts waste money left and right, if that's the case. If both drones do similar job with similar efficiency, then why the hell America's spending 30 million for a drone? I'm pretty sure it's gonna have very different uses in the range and everything. Yes, ...to attack Russian targets in June 2023, only three months after their initial arrival. Payloads can be of various forms of explosives, including cluster-type munitions. One Ukrainian test captured on video saw an airburst above a target that rained fragments over a broader area. This munition makes it a particularly good anti-personnel weapon, but it certainly has many anti-material uses as well, a fact which was proven in late August 2023. One of the drone's more notable feats came on August 27th, when Ukraine used the PPDS against an airbase at the historically significant site of Kursk, deep within Russian territory. Ukrainian sources reported that the strike hit a MiG-29 fighter jet and four Su-30 aircraft. The drones also damaged two Pantsir missile launchers and part of an S-300 air defense system. The governor of the Kursk area, Roman Starovoy, claimed that an apartment block has also been damaged in the drone attack. Russian sources later confirmed that the drones that hit the Kursk airfield were designed like aircraft, which would suggest that they were indeed Ukraine's origami of death. Never content to rest on their laurels, Ukraine's drone pilots used the PPDS again on the 29th, striking another airbase in Peskov, 450 miles into Russian territory. Two Russian cargo planes were destroyed in the attack, and another two were damaged. The attack on Peskov was part of a broader drone... Hold up there, this thing has that much range? When can we get it? As a consumer thing. Not with weapons, obviously, just as a drone. Because today's Amazon drones suck. DJI drones also suck compared to this. If they only cost two, three thousand dollars, it's like that's not bad, right? Especially if you have that kind of range, you can just control it with your like pad or something. So in future, I'm pretty sure they're gonna make that available to consumers. Maybe not, maybe not because like this, is like a you know one or thirty time use type of thing. It's not really that much reusable. It's made of cardboard, which is like people are clumsy. So maybe not. I don't know wave attack between the 28th and 30th, which targeted nine Russian regions, including Moscow. The PPDS might be the so-called cardboard drone and carry less of a payload than other military-grade drones, but it still forced the Russians to disperse their remaining aircraft off their runways in the aftermath of the attacks. Comically, images taken following these incidents showed the Russians resorting to putting stacks of tires on their aircraft to prevent them from taking damage from future drone strikes. Maybe the Russians think of them as an improvised, low-cost version of the cope cage. Less dramatically, the Ukrainians have used PPDS for its intended purpose of surveillance and resupply missions. It's an ideal system to deliver ammunition to hard-pressed troops on the front line, for example, where traditional methods could prove vulnerable to enemy fire. These drones are much harder to target and ideally suited for carrying small arms, magazines of ammunition, mortar rounds, medical supplies, communications equipment, spare parts, and other essentials for infantry squads that often get overlooked. Partridge mentioned that the PPDS is designed for a blood bag. By using the drones to deliver these lighter supplies to hard-pressed troops, Ukraine does not need to risk the destruction of more expensive and valuable military vehicles that cost a lot more money and can carry heavier equipment. The aforementioned attributes are not the final ones for the PPDS. SpyPak is improving the drone based on feedback from its Ukrainian operators. A high-profile Ukrainian delegation, including Kyiv's ambassador to Australia, made a visit to SpyPak in early 2023, shortly after the drones began arriving. The ambassador, Vasil Maryshenko, was full of praise for the cardboard drone. It looks like something that kids would play with, but when you see what it can do, it's really amazing. They've been very good at inflicting lots of damage on the enemy. The company itself suggests that the PPDS is still in development. Initial trials had to be halted thanks to the disruption brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Initially, there was some interest in the PPDS among Middle Eastern countries, which wanted to use it as a cheap way of carrying weapons. However, the Ukrainians have obviously used it in far more complicated missions. Yeah, let's give cheap drones to Middle Eastern countries. It's not like they're already chaotic and mostly destroyed. Every time there's some Middle Eastern country, there's always buildings with holes in them. Like, and now Middle East conflict is already raising. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, what if Israel and insert this country goes to war? I'm pretty sure the videos like that popping up all the time. Like, tensions are rising, right? Who was the Israel? Was it Lebanon? What was the? I don't even know that anymore. Like, how many Middle Eastern countries are going to fight again? Can is there any more disturbing uh, place on the planet besides Middle East? Okay, now let's give them cheaper cardboard play drones. Why not? That's definitely not going to cause issues. This is insane, man. The dialogue between the Ukrainian armed forces and spy pack has provided significant feedback and the company is using it to improve the mission planning system, user interface and ground control station, not just for the PPDS, but the entire line of Corvo drones. Partridge spoke about this collaboration with Defense News. The Ukrainians are using it in certain ways. The most effective way we're hearing about is they're literally cutting holes in the bottom and putting GoPros on 10 second timers. They've got active imagery that's 30 minutes old for a very cost effective way of doing that. For reconnaissance and resupply missions, the GoPro cameras take these 10 second clips at the moment the drone reaches the turnaround. Yeah, but GoPro sucks though. I have GoPro, multiple versions of them. I also have DSLR camera and smartphone. Uh, Galaxy Ultra. GoPro just sucks compared to the Galaxy Ultra and like a you know, mirrorless camera Sony. But I can see how they can be cheaper than the both. But even then, like, I'm really sure like, you can find a mirrorless camera really cheap who still have better imagery than GoPros. I think GoPros mo main thing comes from like a really wide angle, which is also going to be beneficial here. And just like a uh, shutter. So when it moves, it doesn't create this kind of wobbly effect. But in the end of the day, do, don't you need sharpness if you're really taking images from distance? Like, if you don't know what the fuck you're looking at, what's the point of that? Point pre-programmed into the GPS. The Ukrainians' innovation with the GoPro cameras has added another stealthy quality to the PPDS. The quick flight and turnaround with the footage at the appropriate spot ensures there is no data link streaming the footage back to a command post. There is also no link required to give the PPDS its flight instructions. Although the lack of these data links mean that footage will not be live, it's much better for operational security, and things will most likely remain the same within 30 minutes, especially since these drones are hard to detect through visual methods or through radar in the first place. The whole of that, these drones have camera on, that's how they control it, with their, you know, pad, right, whatever, tablet. Why not just screen record the tablet and take photos like that? Like, why do you need GoPro again? Ukraine used these methods to get accurate information about Russian positions in preparation for retaking territory in Zaporizhia. Although Ukraine failed in this offensive campaign, it still pierced the first two of Russia's defensive lines and inflicted more casualties on Russian forces, despite the latter being on the defensive. Accurate information about Russian positions was likely critical in the limited success that it had, especially when it came to neutralizing Russian tanks and artillery positions. Accurate information about Russian movements has also proven important in defensive operations, as it's permitted Ukraine to inflict heavy casualties on enemy forces in their westward drives, assisting in the war of attrition. In September 2023, SpyPak released a new version of the PPDS with a longer wingspan and higher payload at 6 kilograms or 13.2 pounds. Although these new versions are easier for the eye to detect and likely to shoot down due to their larger size, the trade-off is that they can carry more supplies for troops on the front line or, more dramatically, more powerful explosives, all while being still made of the same cardboard-like material that reduces their visibility to radar and resistance to enemy jammers. The latter is an important point because Russia has begun to signal its intention of adapting its tanks to the new reality of drone warfare. Russia has lost thousands of tanks since the war started, and Ukraine's drones are one of the biggest reasons why. Russia understands the danger its armored units are in now though, which is why in early 2024, it began rolling out a new variant of its T-72 tank. Ukrainian soldiers identified this variant as the Tsar EW, electronic warfare, because of the jammers it sported on its frame. These are designed to interfere with the signals of incoming drones and, in theory, should work much better than the cope cages. Ukrainian troops were understandably concerned when they began identifying these. Ukrainian soldiers then captured one of these units in April and laughably found that the jammers didn't work because they were assembled in a hasty slapdash fashion. The antennas might have been made in a factory, but the assembly left something to be desired. They were jumbled together with rope and placed hastily on wooden pallets. 
The result was that the Tsar EW tank that made Ukraine's drone pilots so nervous was revealed as more of a gimmick than a genuine threat, not much better than a cope cage. For the moment, Russian I was just about to give props to Russians like they're adapting, it's gonna cause issue in the future, and then this. It didn't work. You didn't test it. What the fuck is happening there? At this point, don't do something if you're not gonna do it right, because it's just like adding insult to injury at this point. So those jammers didn't work. I'm guessing they're gonna figure it out. And they're gonna innovate it in a way that it actually works eventually. So at that point, drones might not be as effective. But I don't know, man. Even this right now, this is just fucked up. Like, they didn't work. How, how the fuck jammer didn't work? How hard it is to test that? Just one jammer somewhere on a field testing with the drones. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. So, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. How do they just, like, make this tank and just, like, send it away? Oh, it's gonna work. That's just insane. Tanks remain as vulnerable to drones as they have been. Russia's other units are also lacking when it comes to electronic drone countermeasures. Many of the jammers Russia needs to protect its infantry units on the line do not work. One popular jammer, a 2400 model promoted by the popular Two Majors Telegram channel, does not seem to be effective for several reasons. First, its antenna are pointed directly up when most drones come in from the side, which means it loses most of its effectiveness. The jammer also has an inadequate cooling system, which consists of a. But hold on, what? If it points up, that means it, it's gonna have frequency sideways, right? That's how like antennas work. It's not gonna shoot directly like a fucking laser. That shouldn't be an issue. So I, I don't think that would be the issue. I think they, they could like angle all the antennas different so they cover all the areas or something. But yeah, if the antenna is like this, like it's gonna have like sideways like a signal, right? That's how it works. So antennas don't shoot directly like lasers single fan bolted to the interior of a plastic case. There is inadequate ventilation for the fan to draw in cooler air and expel hot air because of this design. The jammer is so hot that it can't be touched, and interior electronic components begin to melt, making it even less effective in countering enemy drones. So in protecting its tanks and infantry or artillery formations from Ukrainian UAVs, Russia is still lagging. Its electronic warfare systems are not up to the task. To make matters worse, there has been little communication between Russia's drone pilots and electronic warfare units, resulting in many of Russia's drones being downed by their own jammers. This was one of the reasons why Russia suffered so many casualties in the Battle of Avdivka. However, Ukraine cannot count on such incompetence continuing forever. Russia has proven surprisingly resilient in learning from its mistakes and adapting on the battlefield. That's not a surprising part, man. Like, you, you can say all you want about Russian army, this and that, but... Uh, since the Soviet time, whether they inherited that or not, like Russia has been power in many other elements, right? Uh, they have far reaching reach, like they've been like in war in modern times a lot compared to any most of the countries out there, right? Uh, comparatively, China is a powerhouse like economically, but China have never been to any kind of war. Russia has been to war, like Georgia and all these other things, right? Azerbaijan. And their equipments are like far reaching. They, they, they do sell equipment to everybody, right? Uh, so eventually they will figure things out. That wouldn't be a surprise. Surprise is how late they do it. Their response should be faster compared to what is right now. So the kings that is out there, eventually they will be all like ironed out. Russia is in wartime economy. I see comments all the time, oh, Russia is not going to do this, Russia is not going to do that. That's not how reality works. Eventually they will figure things out. But how fast they're going to figure things out? Would that be too late? That's the question, right? So them figuring things out is not a surprise. That should happen. But how late it's happening is the surprise. Field. This was one of the major reasons why the Ukrainians' 2023 offensive failed to replicate the success of the year before. It's reasonable to assume that the Russians will improve on their electronic warfare measures if given enough time. This is where the PPDS comes in. The cardboard drone gives Ukraine more options to adapt in the face of improvements to Russia's electronic warfare capabilities. Future PPDS units being able to carry heavier payloads will also come in handy since more power. Yeah, you know what, I will stop now. But yeah, basic video is almost over anyway. But yeah, this, this thing is like devastating. But yeah, if Russia figures out to jam it, like, like at that point it might become useless. But until then, this is going to be very useful, especially now when Russia is like progressing in Prokrovsk, what is that name? Like all those places, I saw King and General video on that. 
so in southern uh, part of ukraine and things where it's like progressing right uh, places like that like in defense ukraine will utilize this which is going to be beneficial especially with like uh, intelligence and things right trying to like find what is what but yeah russia will figure things out like that's how usually it goes but how fast they figure out that's the question is going to be but yeah russia is a powerhouse when it comes to like a cyber cyber warfare like Russia interfered in U.S. election and U.S. didn't know that. U.S. is the most powerful country on the planet. 30 trillion, near 30 trillion economy, which is absurd. That money is absurd, right? Housing companies like Apple and God knows what, which is like Apple itself has a $2 trillion worth, which is also insane, just one company. So U.S.'s economy is insane. U.S.'s money is insane. U.S.'s innovations are insane. U.S.'s defense budget is insane. U.S.'s equipment are insane. It's like they check all the boxes. And somehow Russia broke through U.S.'s defenses and interfered in their election in 2016. FBS, yeah, basically everybody came out saying, yeah, you, there was a, a Russian interference. After like, what, a year or two? It, that's how long it took them. And Russia constantly does that. So the cyber warfare is really good. And that same cyber warfare can translate into another like software electronic hardware related things when it comes to computers so they will figure out jammers and things they will figure out some kind of like cyber warfare and things but how fast they do that that's going to be the question but this was the most surprising video of, about these paper planes ukraine's ingenuity is like insane so what next they're going to do about it what next they're going to figure out that's going to be even more insane like this this is why ukraine has been like so powerful so far because they are the one defending things, their life is at stake, and they are actually figuring things out, which is something, right? Like, how many countries around the planet can say that? With basically nothing, we can figure shit out. Ukraine is actually doing that. Right, well, if you like, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.